Hi there everybody and welcome to another episode of Mouth Off where today we are going to be talking about the English game which you can see on Netflix. As always do like and subscribe if you are enjoying what you see. Um, let us know what you think of this TV show in the comments and uh, yeah anything you disagree with or agree with do let us know in the comments as well and uh, we can hopefully come back to you on those. Today we are going to be looking at the English game, uh, one of Netflix's brand new, uh, se oh, it's a mini series, it's six episodes, uh, I think it's standalone, I don't see a second season coming, um, but today I am joined by the wonderful Scott Davis who uh, was lucky Hello, enough to everyone. speak to a couple of the leads uh, during, when this was. I think it was the last interview we did before lockdown wasn't it? It was definitely one of the last. Yeah I think it was a literally two or three days uh before there was two junkets going in the same hotel and the other one was the one that stefan was our stefan pape was doing that he was doing remotely but they were in they had a junket set up but he was on us on a, oh, a laptop that's right. off camera in his pajamas uh, so we were yeah and also i think we were the only ones that managed to get some film content at, in that particular hotel because they were doing phoners but uh yeah we braved the uh <laughs> corona we braved the elements as they say <laughs> So Scott and uh, Rich went off to speak to uh, Kevin Guthrie and Ed Holcroft, um, who you will recognise. Ed was in, uh, wasn't he in one of the um, Kingsman movies? He was in the first one, wasn't he? He's in the first Kingsman film, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Kevin Guthrie, who's a name I hadn't come across before. Um, do you know his heritage, Scott? What's, what's he been best known for? Yeah, I think he was in, if I remember rightly, he's in, well, he's in Edie. The movie Edie, and he's also in Fantastic Beasts, Crimes of Grindelwald, and he's in Dunkirk. Oh, he's in both Fantastic Beasts. That's where I know his face from. Uh, he was also in Dunkirk, and he was in uh, Sunshine on Leaf as well. So he's been in a few, few Scottish things and a few other bits and bobs. And he's done yeah, he's, some TV he's excellent and, and in whatnot. this. So we're going to do a little bit of a review, what we thought of it. Um, so my background, I'm not a massive football fan. Uh, my children, my especially my uh, second son, Emmett, is a massive football fan. So he's got me more into it. But Scott, Scott's uh, pretty into football. He's uh, very allegiant to one team in particular. It's Arsenal, isn't it? <laughs> Comedy as well on this great show. Comedy. Lovely. No, Dave, it's not <laughs> Arsenal. How dare you? Who is it? During this, during this, <laughs> hey, during this time, on during this terrible dark time, you have to mention <laughs> even darker things. Uh, no, I'm a Spurs fan, and uh, we were just saying off air that that Amazon TV show they're doing is going to be pretty. Uh, it's going to have quite a lot of drama about it. Excuse me, I'm just editing, just moving my thing there. Uh, so yeah, I'm a massive Spurs fan. I I was going to to watch the Spurs since about 1989. It was about the first time that I went to games with my. Uh, it was me and my dad and my granddad and my uncle, my dad's brother that we used to go and I used to have a little stool when it was all standing I had a little blue stool uh down the Paxton Road end of Spurs for you Spurs fans out there with no uh in the old stadium when it was all standing etc uh yeah so it's been in my blood and and it's one of the two things that me and me and Stefan and a few of the other uh writers at the site and at other places have bonded over the fact that we're all kind of football fanatics so it's a strange time to be talking about a football show when there's uh when there's no football at the moment, but for obvious reasons. So uh, yeah, it's 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 one of my two passions in life. So I'm a bit obsessed. But I probably uh, my mum's side of the family are Arsenal fans, and they always think I made the wrong decision, the wrong allegiance, as they say. So <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> that. That's, right. that's good. Yeah, that's good. That's a good uh, little. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of bit of information for you. <laughs> yeah, for any t for any Tottenham fans that uh, haven't seen it yet on Discovery Channel, there's a the Richard Hammond big series. They've got an amazing episode where they look at the brand new stadium and how it was built. And uh, if you haven't seen that, you really should. Um, but anyway, back to the English game. So Scott, do you want to tell us a bit about what what the show's about uh, and uh, yeah, how, how how it all came about? I guess. Uh, yeah. So this is this is co. I think it's co-created, not specifically written or created by, but co-created by Julian Fellows, who obviously was very famous for doing Downton Abbey, and wrote Gosford Park, the Robert Altman film. Uh, so this is his his latest endeavour, uh, and the series follows uh, two two groups of people: the Etonians. Uh, who are obviously very upper class, very well off, very well to do uh, part of society uh, back in the uh, late 1800s. And uh, the factory workers, uh, mainly from sort of Scottish areas with other areas around around the UK uh, that uh, have been brought together as, you know, have made friendships over their, over their love of, of this new game called Association Football. 
uh, and we see them uh, take on the Etonians in a, in a, I think it's a friendly match, isn't it? Or is it, I think it goes on to, to no, lead I think up the to very, the FA. The very first episode is the quarterfinals or semifinals the of quarter the FA quarterfinals, yes, yeah. that's correct, yeah. Yeah, so you see that and you see in the build-up as well the, the kind of, um, what was the telephone call? Sorry, Hello? off. Calling in, is that uh, Julian yeah. Fellows? Yeah, hi it's Julian. Julian Fellows. Yeah, we're talking about the yeah. English game now. Yeah, we're on it. Oh, it was all it was all you, Julian. Okay, thank you for <laughs> clearing that up. Sorry, excuse me. Um, so you see the evolution of of both um, the the game of football, very very not crude, but very different to the game that we know now. But it was only the beginnings of the game, but also the kind of the disconnect of the society uh, in that time when the upper class were very much of their you know, have their own kind of uh, group and they were very much uh, have all these lavish parties and, and lavish dinners, whereas the other guys in the factory workers were struggling to make to make ends meet. So in that way, it kind of mirrors a lot of what's been going on uh, in the UK and other parts of the world. Uh, most recently with, with, you know, the, you know, people talk about the Conservative Party and, and their government, all that kind of stuff about the disconnect in society so much now with people on benefits and universal credit and all that kind of stuff. So it kind of rings a bit true in the that that side of the the story but also you know football is such a massive commodity now and such a massive sport i think it's the biggest sport in the world and it's to look at it from its early beginnings to now where it's this huge multi-billion dollar entity that just has taken over the world and taken over the globe and brought you know fans together in the uk but also fans together all over the world and there's you know countries like us and obviously the usa have embraced it but also the smaller countries all around the world in third world countries that that have football as their as their outlet so it's a really interesting look at how it all began uh but also at the kind of society and and how the world uh especially in england worked uh back in those days which you know isn't too dissimilar in some ways to to how it is now yeah, so true. And the other bit that you haven't mentioned is the fact that the Old Etonians um, are actually the uh, board of the FA. So they are the guys who invented mm. the game. Well, not necessarily invented the game, but definitely put the rules down for it. Um, so you've got Ed yeah. Holcroft plays a guy called Arthur Kinnaird, who's a real life character. He was the first, um, was he first president or I'm not sure he was president, but he was president of the FA for 33 years. He was uh, one of the heads, earlier. yeah. He was one yeah. of the heads of the FA. Yeah. Uh, and there's a really great behind-the-scenes video uh, on YouTube that Netflix put out about um, the making of this show. And they talk about the fact that his character, so Arthur Kinnaird, was um, the first real football star. Um, back mm. then, he was he was potentially the best player in the world, um, but he was actually very, very caring. And the, one of the, my favourite things about this show is not just the football, which is... A big element of it but it's just the humanity around it so actually you see it's it's that proper upstairs downstairs like downton um but it's done in a very clever way where it's not just about the football um players or the poverty divide between the north and south but the it's also about the the wives and how they cope with how football and how uh, how it's changing their husbands' lives, but also how they're dealing with it and how they're living their lives. So there's an amazing storyline with uh, Charlotte Hope's character, who um, sadly in the first episode, I think it's the first episode, um, is it a spoiler to say she loses her baby? I don't think it is. Um, no, I wouldn't say but so. It, but it basically, that, that tr- dreadful happening changes both her and her husband's path for the rest of the entire uh, six episodes. I think some of my favourite scenes were actually completely off the football field and it was just more to do with the uh, the families and the way they all interact with one another and how they all, uh, ha- how football changes people's lives. And they talk about it multiple times, in the, especially in the North, about how football is so much more to them than it is to the rich people down in London. Uh, and it, it's amazing the way they talk about. So if you think about it, these guys in a working class background, they work between, you know, from 5 a.m. in the morning till 9 p.m. at night. There's no time for training to do uh, any football, but they literally are just playing as much as they can just on game days on a Saturday. And it's something the towns absolutely live for. The Londoners who are wealthy, um, they don't necessarily have to work or they've got jobs which are not manual labour. Every evening is like a Downton episode where they're sat around a beautiful table, uh, you know, with um, being waited on hand, foot, finger, and they've got time to train and they've got time to uh, do whatever else it is they need to do to make sure they win the game. And I think what's just brilliant about the English game is just watching these essentially no-hopers uh, just 
completely changed towns and how football is just revolutionary in their lives. Yeah, I think that you know a lot of these, a lot of the best shows, not just not just now, but but uh, but over history, you know, the shows that are about something, but actually they're about something else, are usually the ones that that tend to stick because they draw you in with the subject matter, whether obviously this is football whatever the subject matter is, but it's, it's the people and the, the kind of the environment and the, and the relationships between all of those people that, that really draw you in. And this does a fantastic job of doing that. Yes. It's, it's got elements of football in there, but it's not about the football, you know, there's, there's bits of history in there about the football, but this is about the people. And as you say about the, the class divide, and we were just saying off air, weren't we about the other Netflix documentary series about Sunderland uh, football club, how, how their plight and their. Is it called Sunderland until I die or something, isn't it? Sunderland until I die, yeah. Um, and uh, you, you know, we said off air. You know, it, it, from a dramatic point of view, obviously a lot goes on at Sunderland in the couple of years that they were following them. They got relegated from the Premier League, then they got relegated from the from the First Division. But you can see the impact it has on the the people around it. You know, people have they rely on the kind of not just the the financial impetus that that having a massive football club in the Premier League does for a, for for a city or for a town. Um, it is a city, Sunderland, isn't it? Must be I'd have said it was a city. city. I think it's a city. It's a city. <laughs> we'll say it's <laughs> a city. Any... Congratulations. Got... Might... It's more than a town, isn't it? It's got... <laughs> Sorry yeah, if you're from city, Sunderland yeah, yeah. and you're watching but... this and you're like, of course it's a yeah. city. <laughs> what do we yeah. know? We're uh... just Londoners. <laughs> yeah, terrible. Yeah, we've got it all good enough. Yeah, we're still doing it, aren't we? We've got it fine yeah, down there. You not know? a clue. Um... Not a Scooby. But uh, but not just you know that's a good example of the Sunderland stuff. But also you look at people like Berry. Obviously Berry went bust this year. Um, I think South uh, is it South End and and Morecambe and a few other football clubs are so so close to te- on the edge of going bankrupt uh, and and falling out of the football league altogether. That you just see the impact that has on on their not just their again their their financials, but also these 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 families and these people, whether it's men or women, you know, obviously the the women's game is getting bigger and bigger now. The impact it has on their lives, both good and bad. Um and it's reflected in the show as well, isn't it, as you say, with the, the kind of, you know, the the Etonian people there, they have, you know, all the money that they need to have, everything else where the other guys are working, you know, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen hour shifts just to get just to make ends meet. And their relief from all of that stress and anxiety is to go and play football. Mm. Um so it just and not just the them, it's the the the, uh, the the other people in the cities that just go to watch it. Yes, of course, yeah, yeah. All of that, you know, you look at you look at football now. I mean, the, the people plan their whole weeks around going to the football match. You know, whatever job they've got, whether they've got the job that they love or they've got a job that they do just to to provide f- food for their families and everything else. The Saturday afternoon is that that's their day, or Sunday, obviously now that's their day to go and watch the football, and it brings communities together, large communities together. So. I think this show does a great job of showing that even back then that was the, as you say, that was the case, you know, for the Etonians, they thought it was just a, a thing on the side to do, but for the, for the, um, for the Darwin FC guys, this is their kind of, you know, their, their escape from their, the, the kind of, uh, the chores of their daily life. And I think the show does a great job of, of doing that. Um, but there's a bit of football in there for the fans as well. Yeah. It was interesting to see, cause it isn't, I mean, I did love it when they went to Oval. So they go to the Oval Cricket Ground, mm. which it, well, as is now. Back then, it was a, uh, basically a look like a park. Um, but they do a really nice aerial shot uh, where you can still see the gas can the gas tan canister that is still there today because uh, it's listed at Oval Cricket Ground. Uh, and I just I couldn't get my head around the fact that that was the same place. Uh, and I was trying to imagine yeah. what London would have been like, where that was just a big green field um, with no sort of you know buildings anywhere, which it, as it is now. Um, but it's great to see. Uh, some of these old places that we we know and love um and we should probably talk about some of the production i mean the design on where they shot it uh is macular that what i kept looking at the lady's hair that the the costume and makeup that in this show is amazing and if there's something that the, us yeah. brits do well it's a period drama and uh yeah yes. i was uh, like the, the you know the horse-drawn carriages the dresses that you know even the things that the, the blokes were wearing they're amazing suits um, but especially, I don't know why I just kept looking at the lady's hair, but I was just like, that must have taken forever. And uh, I mean, I know nothing about this stuff, but I was just, I was just <laughs> like the attention to detail. And again, in that featurette that I mentioned earlier, there's a, they talk about how they had 20 footballs made and they had two mm. different types. They had one that was slightly bouncier than another. They had to, they had to get these things specially made up in, um, 
Or they set off for this, but no, it was the outfits, wasn't it? They had to get them specially made up north, the where they weren't they were done made. by yeah, cotton. Was, they two were, different ones. Yeah. They were weaved, um, mm. and they had to search for someone who could make these weave tops to make them authentic to the time. And that was a very Julian Fellows esque thing to to want to make it as you know as authentic as he possibly could. Um, so yeah, it's uh, I really enjoyed this. Show. I think so. To answer the question, is it any good? Uh, <laughs> I'd say yes. Scott, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I did enjoy the show. I think, you know, people, again, come back to the fact that it's about football. It will bring, obviously, football fans in because it's about the 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 early days of the, the sport and the, the kind of juxtaposition between how the game has evolved to this, you know, if you watch it from a football point of view, you, you would watch the, because the, there's been some criticism about this. And I think it's always, in, almost, in, and the guys were saying this when we interviewed them, it's almost impossible to recreate football at the, if you were to play football now and to do a football film about football now, it'd be so difficult to recreate it as a drama dramatized version. But back then, the game was very different. I mean, you'll see that you know there's uh, the kind of uh, rugby mentality of the guys mm. where they they all just kind yeah, of chase char- the ball, charging at people, where they all like... charge at each other. Yeah, and it's and it's. Um, it's uh, Fergus, uh, Kevin Guffrey's character, Fergus Suter, who's a guy that says, no, no, why don't we go out wide? And you, you, you kind of hear the guys say, what do you mean go out wide? They're like, no, no, spread the spread the pitch. Spread you know, you don't have to yeah. be in one position. Yeah. And it just shows you how the game went from this kind of very much a rugby-esque kind of, not a mob mentality, but everyone trying to get the ball when actually the game was, you know, was about using the space and patience and, and building up to 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 strike on the the opponents and obviously now we take for granted the football now but the formations you know, the, as well the formations of... didn't exist did they until these no, guys yeah, came no. along and started thinking about it yeah Fergus Suter was I mean I, I'm not sure how historically accurate it, it is but he was very revolutionary in all of that stuff yeah they said the that didn't that they, they said the at game... the end it does say uh, that Jimmy Hope uh, sorry Jimmy Love and Fergus Suter were both uh, instrumental mm. uh, people in, you know in making football the the game that we know and love today. Uh, yeah it ch- they changed it they revolutionized it we wouldn't have football the same way we have it now obviously it's evolved beyond kind of formations now you know it's uh, football these days has become very much similar to how people play their computer games of, of football in the sense that formations don't matter as long as you play the game how you your your manager wants you to play the game which is very fast lots of pressing never letting people settle on the ball whereas in the old days everyone was going for the ball at the same time so you'd yeah. almost see it's like a child's you know, playground the ball, the ball would just be chase, here and everyone would just follow the ball yeah <laughs> almost if it was like some weird version of dodgeball or something but um but the, yeah the guys were saying how difficult it is to replicate that and there's been football films over the years you know fever pitch when saturday comes those goal uh that series of movies and you never ever really feel that the football is realistic it's all very slow and very ponderous but it's because it's being made into a film everything has to be broken down into little chunks um so that's different difficult but i think they do it well because the game you know anyone that goes into this thinking you're going to watch them play football like liverpool and manchester city yeah. do now you're going to be disappointed but it's not it's about the historical context which is i think if you like downton abbey into... if you like downton yeah. abbey you like you like football as a subject and you like period dramas like you're gonna love it so my mum and dad mm. texted me the other day and they were like david have you seen this show called the english game and they always text me this stuff and then i always just go yeah and i send them a link <laughs> to one of our interviews that we so it's like a, yeah, of course of course it's my job to know these things um so but but the fact that they were watching it showed me that actually mm. the audience for this is fast uh, and you know I, I really enjoyed it and i'm sure they did too so um yeah. Should we talk briefly about some of these supporting characters? So there's also Neve Walsh, who you may know from Jamestown. We've actually interviewed her uh, on the site before for Jamestown. She's a fantastic actor. Uh, she, I think she's destined for great things. And um, uh, so Scott and I recently inter- interviewed Kate Phillips for her new TV show, Miss Scarlet and the Duke, which I think is on, on Alibi. Which is, a, which is a free view. I think it's a free view channel, isn't it? It's yeah. part, I think it's part of BBC, but it's one of the okay. offshoot. Like, it's all about dramas isn't it and that's it. and uh like mysteries and murder yeah, that's why it's called alibi i guess <laughs> <laughs> so she you know her from peaky blinders and um but she's a very very small role in this but equally just brilliant uh and again amazing hair <laughs> amazing hair amazing that's hair. the thing with the downton abbey you know I mean, you just mentioned the miss scarlet as well the detail of all of those shows because 
they sometimes don't have the biggest of budgets for that kind of stuff because it's all within you know the realms of of movies obviously this is netflix so it probably got slightly more yeah I bet uh, expansive a budget than, than miss scarlet and the duke but you look at the detail when we spoke to them about miss scarlet and the duke about how how difficult it is to do it but also how easy it becomes because if you get the right setting and you get the right stuff around you then it's easy to 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 fake and this this does it really well i love the all the gold kits as well because you can see again you know the the kind of the 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 uh the steps up to kits becoming a thing in football you know and yeah going into then having the crests and having the shirt sponsors and having the kit manufacturers and then having squad numbers and having those other advertising on it like look at that the stripes it looks like they're prison guards doesn't it but <laughs> it really that does. was the way to diff diff to, to differentiate from i like this shot here the... with julian fellows smack in the middle of it i, thought, I think that's a good I've got I've got to be honest with you, Dave. That 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 picture, that goal looks massive. It does look massive, doesn't it? Do you know what annoys me about this photo is why didn't they get the guys far left to move slightly further down so there's not a gap? Like there should be an extra person in there. But that's just my OCD uh, and symmetry. Maybe they've uh, maybe there was a like a a, a character. In, maybe it's like Avengers Endgame where they had to like edit it out so they don't spoil <laughs> season two. Not that there'll be a season two, but but uh, but yeah, as you say, the the, the intricacies and the detail mirror the intricacies and the detail of the of you know the society and the, the time i mean look at that that's just incredible yeah, it's brilliant um there's kate phillips but, and charlotte hope's always great she was great in that um uh spanish princess show which we interviewed her for she she was really good in that as well so yeah a good a really good ensemble of people in this one so there we go so that's sort of our review of the english game i i think i mean ultimately we loved it i think uh i'm, I'm actually might watch it again i don't really generally watch shows again but I just, I just, I got, I got a lot out of it. I thought I have my wife hasn't seen it, and I think she'd really enjoy it. So I think I might watch it with her. But um, yeah, I mean, if I was going to give it a rating out of five, it's probably a four, I'd say. Um, I think Scott. Yeah, I, well, I was going to say three and a half, but we can round up. That's fine. I don't mind rounding up. Yeah, we don't really we'll do we'll half say, stars. We'll say do we? four. The only thing I will say is, obviously, we're in a, a strange time, as we've been talking about with uh, coronavirus and everything else, that people who want their football fix, they won't be disappointed, but don't expect football as you... It might be easier to get out your Arsenal or your Tottenham or whatever club you sport DVD and watch that instead, because the football is very different. Yeah. Um, but if you're interested in the football, you're interested in the history, uh, in you know, and kind of as we say, a, a, a different perspective on the game. If you have watched the or just where just where it came from, whatever. I think it's always important. Just where it came know. from, I think. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Of course. So I think that. But if yeah, if you're looking for high and ener high energetic. 2020 roaring state roaring stands uh, and, yeah you might yeah. want to go on youtube and just watch some highlights instead because yeah. this is a this is very different but it's within the context of the history of the sport which i for me is fascinating i would recommend it to to everybody really you know all in everybody i think there's so many football well i mean in terms of football fans there wasn't can... any swearing in it that i recall was there so maybe kids can I watch think there it, was a there know. was a few was might have been a few like maybe like dams or <laughs> stuff like that Damn. maybe but no 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 actual swear words yeah i think oh, it's I, I think it's there's one PG injury is isn't there there's one injury that's not nice to look at yeah yeah and it's one of those shows that there's a few subtle other things in there but nothing i think it's pretty much rated a pg isn't it on netflix yeah, if not I, it's a 12 only because of maybe the injury and the the small words here and there but yeah it's 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 pretty harmless in that respect for, for everybody yeah. so if you're an eight-year-old or you're an 80-year-old and you enjoy football this is a definitely a show to watch this is the one so there we go so if you enjoyed that make sure you give us a thumbs up uh and make sure you subscribe and uh let's use my handy subscribe button here it comes boom look at that and um yeah do let us know in the comments below if you liked it make sure you watch our interview with ed holcroft and kevin guthrie which is on youtube i'll put a link in it in the comments uh or maybe even on the screen because i can do that yeah and uh yeah let us know if you'd like more of these videos we intend to do more and unless you hate them and then maybe we'll stop but uh yeah it's uh, always a pleasure and uh we'll see you next time on mouth off take care bye Bye-bye. Stop. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.